matter, greater Atlanta chapter. And there have been real issues where people have tried to use the movement, tried to use the momentum of crises to gain a reputation, to gain clout. It's the same thing that's happening in Minnesota and in Indianapolis and other places like that. There, there are always people that are trying to go after the clout, the money, and then the recognition that comes with being on top of this issue or being the face of a lot of these issues. Um, and I'm here to tell y'all, as somebody a historian, it was the same thing during the civil rights era. There were a lot of people that deeply despised Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Mrs. Coretta Scott King because of, of who they were and the prominence they had within the movement. They felt like they were too young, uh, like they shouldn't be there, like they hadn't yet paid their dues because Martin Luther King was only 26 when he took over the Montgomery boy, boy, bus boycott. When he was the president of FCLC, he was only 26 years old. And remember, he was assassinated at 39. Um, so this has been like a longstanding issue. And honestly, bro, like I'm, it sucks that this happened. And as soon as I saw uh, Lowe uh, post something about it and I started doing some reading about it, I'm, I'm not surprised at all, bro. A lot of these, these people, they, fina- they finagle their, their financial situation for their benefit because a lot of them, again, they don't have the training. They don't have the background. They also don't have the credibility to be leading organizations. There's just a lot of times they pop up in these circles where they're the ones that are taking advantage of the situation, and then thus you you get what you get, and so it's a it's a very painful to, thing. You, to be honest with you, they're at best they're social media influencers, right? Um, and they find they find like a hashtag that pops off for them or a movement that pops off for them, and they take advantage of that. At best, that's what. Well, they do. and then too, I don't I don't want to I don't want to you know. I don't want to. I'm, I'm gonna say his name, but I, I, I've also been around this dude too. But I know the reputation he has. You know, Sean King. Uh, a lot of the things that that he has done have been very beneficial. But as you probably are very well aware of, there's a lot of accusations about his treatment of African American women, his employment of African American women, his misuse of funds, uh, and he's obviously had to fight that battle publicly many different times. And I'm not involved in that at all. Um, but again, it's, it's unfortunate that in this space, especially in nonprofit spaces, but in black spaces uh, that are organizations trying to deal with, uh, again, you know, the penal system, trying to deal with voter registration, trying to deal with, with police reform, uh, even just economic reform. There are a lot of money grabbing people, not, not most of them, uh, but especially, again, there are organizations out here that have had a heinous reputation for money grabbing and it happened the same thing happened to the king family as well uh with within members of the king family itself trying to do the same thing so i just think that if you are thinking about investing in organizations the more reputable you can find an investigation you can find behind the scenes the better Um, like i said even the three organizations that i mentioned like those are organizations that have been around for a while uh and even brian stevenson with eji hasn't been around for super long uh, but he's been a lawyer in montgomery and dealing with uh the death uh, the death row inmates and obviously the death penalty uh, and around the country for a very long time. And those are people that are actually have done the work, have the credibility, have the organization, have the mission, have the training, have the education. And a part of this too, is you have to find tangible goals. So like, what is the outcome of what you're doing to so like, you're saying, like when I do this thing, when I join with you, what is the outcome? Is it just further awareness? Is there an action? You know, what exactly is going to be the end product of what you're doing? And so that's always for something to investigate. So, uh, this has happened with Black Lives Matter before, the organization, so this is not the first time this has happened. This is obviously the biggest story um, that's taking place. Uh, Swiper, it, it's not just going to happen now. It's going to happen again. Right. Because I want, y'all to get, I want y'all to listen to this. Nonprofit organizations at one point or another are scams. What do you mean? Period. No, they're not. That, they're, why would, why would you say scams, that? Bro. Why would you say that? Because at the end of the day, bro, they're tax exempt. That's not a, that is just like that doesn't church. make it a scam. So that and the money doesn't always flow. It's hard for it to flow to what is needed because it got to go through so many hands. So when it goes through so many hands, a lot of washing happens. No, I work for a nonprofit. I can I can tell you right now that that's that's not true, bro. I said at one point or another, you might have not worked for it in that time where you know some shady shit was going on. But you but you realize not, the but so a part of the issue with that comment though, you do realize the backbone of, of civil rights in this country, the backbone of, of anything that has to do with any democracy-led movement to human rights in America started within the black church itself. Like, and that's a non-profit organization. So even, even with that statement, it's not even true to what's happened within America to have the reform that we had at every level. Like you wouldn't, none of the stuff that we have would exist without having started from within the black church itself, even just from I, the I didn't say, I didn't say, yeah. I didn't say they weren't effective. I didn't say they weren't effective. I just said at one point or another, the type of funny businesses are happening in majority of these nonprofit organizations. One of the reasons why is they're tax exempt and they're not audited by the IRS. 
so they could fly all types of funny business. To that's that, not. That that's also not true. You you absolutely so yeah. Every that's not that's all, not true because because even even this BLM situation right now they're they're, they're being audited like yeah, as you speak. you so you're, every yeah, every every audited. dollar you get has to be reported. So the again that's another falsity that people don't understand about getting money in grants or if corporations give you money uh, for grants or donations or whatever even, even personal money. Every dollar we receive or any nonprofit receives, if you're good, if you're doing your job, every dollar gets reported. And you have to report where that dollar amount went to, whether it be savings, whether it be building maintenance, building construction, property maintenance, whether it just be simple to pass salary and pay health care, dental, all of that. Every single dollar you utilize goes through the administration office, goes through the finance building, and then the finance building then tracks every dollar spent and which grant the money came out of. So I, I, can, I can personally tell you that that's not true. You learn something new every day. North, go ahead. Northy. <laughs> I'm, I'm just disappointed, man. Like, I'm one of those people that literally donated to this exact organization. Like, Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation donated $5,000, me and my family. I remember helping out my sister during during the rise. I'm, and I'm just, I've just seen so many people defending them, saying it's just business, but it's really just not. Like, when you when you gain that much money and you decide you decide to not help black businesses decide not to do what you're supposed to do and you decide to spend it on six million dollars on a mansion that's crazy I mean I just feel robbed man I ain't gonna lie five bands is crazy um yeah, yeah. sage go ahead Yeah, and again, I think the the biggest the biggest kind of takeaway because I my lens is a little bit different. I'm I'm more on the corporate side, and I've kind of seen how larger charities are kind of structured as vehicles for people to kind of move money through. But I think yeah. that when you're when you're at the grassroots level, the, the biggest thing that we we as people again is we always have to consider who's the person enabling change and. The biggest kind of example that you guys have already kind of mentioned is the civil rights era activist, and you know their efforts. They were very visible. You could feel them, and also to an extent, they were tangible to the sense that Dr. King was actively, um, you know, he had the the the, uh, the efforts that he connected with people. But in today's world, we don't have that same frame, and so. Again, and sorry, Northy, that you got you got finesse out of your you know your your money, but you also have to consider where where that's going and also who those individuals are. And so, to a lot of people, I would just say you need to kind of verify and and try to feel the change. And because I've kind of seen how things get a little bit how can I say broad uh, at certain levels. Honestly, if you find a good community-based initiative with people that are actively involved, a lot of times, you know, your your town's community center will have an activist or someone that's working on civil and social issues in there. Teachers at schools that are from the community tend to be very involved. Those are individuals who may know or may be able to guide you into places where your money would be best put to use. Once you get it to a national level, there is a level of abstraction wherein uh, you can kind of feel as though money is just going all over the place. There's a lot of people touching it, and and you don't know where it's going. And then you have bad actors like BLM, which kind of ruins the movement as it, as much as it is a movement. But it it won't phase anyone that's at the grassroots level, who's in your community, who you can go and actually sit down and have a conversation with. And then to um, your to your point, adding into that, like it's yeah, it's not ahead. it's not even. And I, I'm adding into that. I want you to continue, but it's not even the people that all the way make up the organization It's the people at the top, like 98% of the people that work for BLM or 97, if they had nothing to do with it or were aware of it, Absolutely. They, they don't make any money. They actually are the ones on the ground doing the work. But again, it's those people at the top who took advantage of a situation and they profited from the situation. But the problem is like you're saying as SCJ, that's, it affects everybody. So not everybody can be out of a job. Everybody can be having salary cuts because of the decision yeah. of a few. 
And 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 actually, swipe is a great point. Just just for future reference, I'm just Sage S A G E. That's how you just Sage, sage. like okay, Sage. Gotcha. Yeah, like the thing girls be waving around. Um, but the crazy. But uh, you <laughs> uh, you made it. You made a great point, swipe. But uh, um, what a lot of times again, my my view is is a little bit different. But a lot of times when we think about politics, we think about uh charity you think about a lot of organizations we have we as a as a black community and I'm, I'm making a lot of uh um assumptions here but we tend to have a vilified view of it that these people are evil they're there to make a lot of money and and they're just trying to profit off of the pain that a lot of people feel and to some level that's true but more often than not the people involved in these organizations are very committed to change and want the best for the for the people that they're impacting because a lot of times they come from a, a, pers- a pers- perspective or position where they were hurt at one point in time and they strive to change it. The problem is those people who have that belief oftentimes are not in a position where they can enact that change the way they want to. And so it's important to kind of do the work early on to figure out if you can trust someone. And a key rule that I kind of have before I interact with any organization, make any donation or even just work with someone can I have a meeting with the individuals or can I even access the individuals that are making those um, high level decisions who are deciding where the money is going, who is deciding where the direction of this thing is. If I can't do that as a, and I'm talking just on the community level, if I can't even meet with someone or go to an event and have a brief conversation with them, then I won't get involved because I simply don't know. And I know a lot of us, we have to trust that these people have our best interests at heart but if we truly want to see change, we do have to do a little bit of due diligence to ensure that it's individuals we can trust and they truly share the same vision that we have. And again, I want to before before Brooks goes, I, I think that that goes to like what I was saying earlier. People people just want to say like, and, and not, I'm not saying this is you, North, but people want to say like, yeah, BLM, BLM, I got the T-shirt, I donated, I got the email to prove it, I got the stickers, I got the pins. I got the car decal. I have these things. And it makes me feel good that I did this grandiose thing because I donated this money. When, to be quite frank, all you have to do is go down to your local food bank. All you have to do is go to a a book drive. All you have to do is go down to the shelter and volunteer. Um, Change, change doesn't, uh, change, change in um, activism and, and charitable work don't come in these yeah, I did. A, I get these pins from Red Cross in the mail because you know I sent a couple thousand dollars to Haiti and X, Y, and Z. Um, change can be taking your old jackets and bringing them down to the shelter. Yeah, it's not supposed to be sexy. Yeah, and I, and I think, and I think Omar, to your point, like if it's, I think it's okay if you start there, right? Like if your first thing is like you don't know what to do and you say like I'm gonna get a pin, I'm gonna get a shirt, like. I want to march. I'm going to do these other things. Like that's always great. But then to Omar's point, like a part of the growth and development process is finding other ways you can invest in the process, in the community, in the struggle by organizing, learning how to do things on your own, learning how to mobilize on your own, learning how to actually identify the issue and then therefore find solutions and compromises with the people that you're trying to actually work with in order to make these things happen. So you're absolutely right, Omar. Again, those are all base level things. And so that, that's where that training and that's where that, that organization process comes in, just having finding people to help you get where you want to go. Yeah, I'm a, I'm actually, a... I really wasn't educated on I really wasn't educated on like the situation. And I obviously just wanted to help out, especially during the riots. With all the all the outbreak and all everything that was happening, it was just kind of like a instinct kind of just you know I, I'm trying to think of the word, I really can't, but just in the moment type of type of thing. No, it's, it's all understandable. I'm actually I'm about to bounce myself, but I I think I think what is important here is to understand that uh, I think people not only need to be a little bit more understanding of how um, donating works, um, because especially at a, at a larger level where um, where where unfortunately, I mean there there is some logistics that come behind running a massive organization that is that is supposed to be nonprofit. And it has a lot of donating going on because those type of companies like literally have to find ways to spend money. And so like because because it's like literally a nonprofit. So there cannot be any profit at the end of the year. 
And some of that comes in the form of, hey, we're we have to pay people or we have to give transportation to volunteers to go from here to there or actually pay people to kind of set things set these things up. And as time progresses, you may end up getting lost in the concept of the nonprofit. I, I still just think that, um, you know, when you get to the point where you're, where you're pushing, you know, multiple homes at millions of dollars just for the sake of spending <laughs> money, I think that is that gets to a point where it's not even justifiable. And, and not only that, um, you just be more aware of, of how to properly donate. And I always highly suggest if you if you want to be involved, get involved personally. So when you do finally donate, you're donating to something or someone that you know how the ins and out um, actually functions. And, and I'm not even saying that you have to do that in, in the sense of like participating with them every weekend, but at least get an understanding of what they stand for, what they're, what they believe in. Um, there, there's a lot of things that that specific chapter or that specific branch of BLM, if you went to their website before they took it down, I mean, I've heard things about how, they didn't believe in a nuclear family. They they didn't. Exactly. They were intertwining other people's beliefs with BLM. So it was almost like they were just a driving force for a bunch of other, um, a, a bunch of other things outside of just Black Lives Matter. It was it was a lot of things when I did further research on them, and it's it's pretty concerning. So I just Imagine, always it, just it was a fast food of social justice, bro. Like, like that's what they was pe- peddling, dog. Yeah, like it was it was it was pretty nasty. And then also, I've heard people say like, ever a lot of it was very. The protesting at that time was at its height during um, the le- the election, and now since we're like two years removed from the election, you you have to ask yourself why isn't protesting happening as as often as it was happening leading up to the election, and that that is also very telling. And then also other, you know other um, foundations in the area that this is being founded in has been questioning like, Hey, is there any update? Hey, can we get any funding? Hey, you know, where, you know, it's, it's a lot of things when you, when you start to dig a little deeper into it. So I just advise people to just be, in, be much more informed when you're don- donating and always understand when you are donating every dollar that you're donating more than likely will not reach the, the place that you're trying to, um, that you're trying to touch just because, I mean, they, they do have some overhead that they have to cover. So just try to do as much as research as you possibly can so you can properly inform yourself so as much as your money can go towards the cause that you're trying to um, push. Um, this 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 has been going on for years, uh, I think somebody said. Red Cross is another one that's pretty infamous, unfortunately, where like a huge portion of their fees that the money that you give them goes into administration fees instead of actually donating to the people that are trying to affect. So just be aware of it. Um, we, we're doing a playback video on it. Um, and if it doesn't get uploaded today, it'll get uploaded tomorrow. So that that's the video that we're, we're looking at doing, but it's, yeah, when, when you, when you start to really read into the houses that they bought, I mean, it, it, is, it is the definition of excessive, especially coming from people who believe in Marxism. Like there, there's no way. <laughs> Hey, There's that's no the way. irony of it all, bro. I swear to God. I don't even... Yeah. You know what's crazy, though? I don't even... At one point in time, they might have believed in it. And I'm just... I'm trying to play a little devil's advocate because, mind you, they probably just picked up Marxism because that's what the cool kids were talking about at the time and Thanks. they knew that they could yeah, peddle yeah. it. But they might have believed in it. But at the moment that, like, Don Lemon is asking her those questions, she should just say, yeah, I, I, I mean, literally, I have these homes. I, I can't be a Marxist anymore. Like, I just... By definition, I can't be that. And I think, honestly, it would have came off a little bit better than saying, hey, I'm a Marxist. Oh, well, here's my here's my lame excuse as to why I still have these homes. Um, but, yeah, I'm still repping Marxism. Like, that's that's come on now. But you I mean, but you kind of can't. It, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but and I don't I, I would love to believe that the whole foundation did not get um established just for, you know, for a quick come up, but there's just so many things that as I continue to dig deeper into it, that literally just contradict the essence of who these people claim that they were. And cause it's like, I get what you're saying. Like may- maybe, maybe they might've only picked to be a Marxist at the beginning, but even if, even if that is the case, let's just say that they were moderate, the houses that they're buying are still very, <laughs> it's still very extreme. So it's like, even if you were like, it's not like you bought like five, 
regular houses. It's not like you bought like one mansion. Like, mansion no, you, yeah, you you bought not only a, a one mansion, but you bought another mansion or a, a huge ranch style mansion out in Georgia, and then you have another house. Like it's just like you. These are not normal houses that they're buying. There's literally only like one fairly normal size house. All the other ones are like very extreme, and it's like, man, like like what are you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? So I, that's I just gotta leave y'all on that. Thank thank you, Omar, for hosting. Legend, this is, is it, it the issue with love these, you. I'm not I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, nonprofits in that aspect because once they get big, I, I to me personally, I think there's always some funny business going on. It's almost impossible because the nature of man, bro, is that like power corrupts people, even people who come out trying to do good from the jump. In the long run, like power corrupts, bro. And it's just absolute very few. power corrupts absolutely. And, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And there's very few people who can resist such things. So these type of things are always going to play out. And I say that, and I don't want people to be discouraged to not donate. I think you should donate. One reason, even if you're not helping somebody else, you're helping yourself. When you give, it's a it's a it's a thing that makes you feel good, right? So at the end of the day, you're helping yourself out at the very least. But in terms of these type of organizations, bro, I personally do not donate. I will, I would rather donate my time, passing out food like Om Omizi said, or you know, donating your jacket, things of that nature, because it's almost a pyramid scheme about the money. It just touches too many hands, and the, it's not like uh, I forgot who said they are audited. They are audited to a certain extent. They have to reach like a million dollars of of like re of of like money coming in before they even have to file that many paperwork. And yes, they do have to have some accounting on play, but it's not overly looked at. Like I work in the in the corporate world and we get audited, bro. And we get like, dog, they looking at everything. They flipping. I'm 100% I'm sure that's not how it works in the, in the nonprofit world. Maybe in the BLM because, I mean, their war chest, they said it was $60 million. So that could be the case. But from my experience, it's just not. Nonprofits, is, bro, there's it, no, a lot of funny up. businesses that go there. You heard him. Shut up. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, on that, straight. on that, on that. No, I'm about, I'm about to go. I'm about to, I'm about to bounce. But thank All you, right, brother. Uh, but for real, going on like what you were saying is like it really is true. Because I mean, even when you're considering an audit, like because they deal with so many cash donations, like it's sure your receipts might say it came from a certain source, but that can be something that's easily. I guess manipulated would be the word I would use. Easily manipulated as to where the source of the funds is coming from, you know. Yeah, yeah, that that's uh that's definitely very true. Um and honestly talking about what somebody else said earlier that um that this doesn't just affect not this like the whole community for Black Lives Matter, but just a lot of people in general. Um and it's just unfortunate to see that like even in in situations of an organization like this it seems to be like i, I don't want to i'm sure she didn't have like the intention to like mess up her own people but it definitely like i mean that that's what it did it affected her own people um and it's just unfortunate to see that in this case that like a lot of times in the african american community at least we tend to like mess up our own people um and mess up like just the chances of us getting further um, into into bigger things. Um, why you Why you're saying that though? I think that that's like I don't I don't even know how to say that's some of these things that we're saying, and it's messed up to say it's black people things. So because again, white organizations, white churches, those things have been stealing for years. However, it's not a it's not this major crises and all this stuff when they're caught. It's honestly brushed under the rug and then a new one comes up, you know, again and not saying that that's not the same thing that happens um, with like black organizations. But I can guarantee you, like you said, this does, quote unquote, mess it up or skew the opinions of certain people who are wanting to support black organizations. It I don't know why. <laughs> We do take stuff to the extreme, and I'm not saying we should just be oh, you know, white people do it, so we should be doing it. But it should, it, it truly just should not skew the opinions and views of people. I don't know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, 
I, I fully agree with what she's. It, it just sucks because I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, now people are going to be like, well, well, now I'm not going to donate no more money to Black Lives Matter because I don't know what they're about now. Um, I'm, but I think like for any organization, you need to research to the maximum for like what these people did before they even became activists in this organization. What 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 do they truly stand for before you ever? put a dime into them um and we probably wouldn't have had this issue to begin with um and i'm sure not of course not all the people in this organization had the intention of doing this of course because from my understanding she was the only one getting the money um and so on and so forth but it's just it's really just a shame that this is how it uh turned out like bro the whole thing about the blm right it's the, a lot of it, man, it was pushed by the, the by the Democratic Party during. I think Legend said it during the time of the the election, right? Like all of a sudden, all the protests were happening around that time. It was used as a rallying cry to get the black vote out there, right? The black urban vote, just not only black folks. And all of a sudden, it kind of just disappeared right after the election to a certain extent. And so you could already see there's some type of play of it being used to kind of get your votes in that aspect, right, and just bring attention to it. And not one time have I heard, because the changes that, that need to be made in terms of, like, the whole police brutality stuff, it doesn't really happen in a big election, bro. It happens locally. Like, I don't vote, bro, for no president, none of that. Like, that doesn't do anything for me. I'm in California, bro. Whether I vote red or blue, it's always going to go blue, so it doesn't do anything. But I do vote locally. Locally is where the, where the power is at. Like, your sheriff is up for, for election. Like, people don't understand that. Like, judges are up for election in your in your county. That's the stuff. that Those are the ones that could sway within your locality of laws and how it should be governed. From the overhead, from a senator. Bro, like, this, a senator in Kentucky is not going to have that much uh uh, imprint on my life so i'm not sweating that like you feel me so when i saw like the blm was moving they were moving from a national point of view and what's national national is president which everybody votes on that's already new from the jump i'm like bro this is just another avenue for them to push a vote towards biden and shit like that right and this is not like an anti-biden like you know rant it's just it just it is what it is yeah um Long story less long before I conclude this space, pretty productive space, is, you know, activism, activism isn't sexy. Sage said that earlier. Activism, those, he said those words earlier. Activism isn't sexy. <laughs> activism, charitable work, helping the community, all these other things, it's not sexy. It's not something that should be posted. Or, and you can, I don't, I don't care what you do, but it's not something to be posted on social media to be bragged about, to be X, Y, and Z. If you did your research and just looked a little bit, you would know that, I mean, people people still are dealing with the ramifications of supporting certain movements um, over certain civil rights issues. Still can't find jobs, still can't do work, um, still are getting blackballed in, in their arenas because of this, um, activists that profit are not good people. I don't, I don't know how to slice it. Becoming a career activist, becoming a making it your job, no, it's not. It's not one of those things. Um, so just just strip strip down your idea of what it is, of what caring for the community is, of what giving back is. Um, and ask yourself, well, how can I make change within my own? First, do your own house, then do your own family, then do your own community. You can, you, I think of working backwards like that is probably the most beneficial. Go ahead, Z, before I close the room. I just kind of wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying there just a little bit because, like, I have a weird perspective on it. I was raised, uh, like, spent my whole life pretty much as a Jehovah's Witness. I don't know if you know anything about them, but they, they work off of donations, right? Mm -hmm. And the thing that, like, I don't want to make this a religious issue, right? But the thing that, like, killed my faith was that I, at one point when I was 17, 18, I looked deeply into the finances of Jehovah's Witnesses and where my donation money really was going and the life that the 
people at the top were living as opposed to me who grew up not living that life, you know, and that, that pushed me away from my faith, you know, that pushed me away from the things I believed my entire life, you know, and I don't, I just don't want to see other people be pushed away from activism and being pushed away from trying to make a genuine change in the world because some people were assholes and took advantage of kindness. You know, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Um, appreciate everybody for coming out. Let's keep it a buck podcast. Um, yeah, bye.